Now you're you're you know you're SK going into this, okay, and you have to you know figure out what your approach is and what does SK do in the picks and bands? You know, like where does that look? Do they what what's the deal with the bands? What bands should we expect to see? You know, fill us in on that. I think they need to be careful about the early game aggression from Titan. Uh, you notice, like this game, they went and took the blue buff. They denied the blue buff completely uh, early game. Rotated it over, denied reels the blue buff. And on Rama, now that he's one cost mana, it's harder to clear the wave if you don't have a blue buff, right? So he fell behind in Apollo. And I think the game just kind of snowballed from there. Just, they just kept, you know, invading the jungle and taking fights all, all the time. And most of the fights they won. So I, I think it's. They have to try to pick early game girls too to be able to deal with that. Well, I think it's also just, again, back to overconfidence. Reels jumping in 4v1, 3v1 many, many times, end up dying and not getting a valuable kill there. But, you know, I, I think this also opened up the map for Titan a lot. They had a lot of control over it. So let's go ahead and check out what Titan was able to do, especially on the backs of Repikos, Ataraxia, Kanya even all over the place. 59% to 41% as well. Definitely a really a tough game for SK. They were close, right? But you got 75% to 25% mid, power almost even. And this is probably the closest we've ever seen speed in a game that was lost, right? I mean, and the game length went long, right? Obviously, the longer the game goes, the more map control is going to skew for the winning team because they're controlling it the entire game and they're going to keep controlling it as long as they have a gold lead. 65%, 35% is pretty respectable for SK Gaming. I think it's just a combination of Zeros not being comfortable with Kali and Reels being overhyped and overconfident with his plays and his ability to take on 3v1, 4v1. I mean, you have to think about it. You're in a $2.6 million tournament on the stage for dozens of thousands of people to see. You got to give some credit to your opponent. Yeah, no, that's very true. I mean, they're here for a reason, right? And uh, definitely evident there. And like you said, right, as the game goes on, you know, you're, you're going to start to see the numbers skew more in the favor in the team that was winning or that is winning. Um, but speed again, <laughs> right? Uh, speed again is, uh, you know, in the advantage. We've seen that happen a lot, right? And granted, while just to reiterate, you will see those numbers skew, right? It's still evident that you know, just the way Titan approached it. Just, it looked so good on their end. Um, expecting the same thing in game two, honestly. So do I. I think going into game two, it's going to be fresh. Uh, I think SK is just going to probably switch around some game plans. And note for sure that Repikas doesn't just play hyper carries. That he has a well, like, absolutely well-rounded god pull. Being able to pull out Athena jungle in a 2.5, a 2.6 million dollar tournament, that's absolutely just he's very confident i think for sure that replicas is looking at that and is going to be prepared i'm just looking at the map here and i'm surprised i mean sk didn't get a single gold fury or fire giant the entire game um and they lost actually most of the mid harpies only got 25 percent on the mid harpies however with that said they actually held the base for a long time it was kind of yeah. hard for titan to sure. get in there and i feel like if they had anything else than a kali who was like no under farmed it could have gone the other way around because you're not supposed to be able to hold for this long if you lose this many, this many camps. But Titan at the end, you know, put on through, took all the Phoenixes. I was just getting worried, you know, when um, Adraxa died to the Phoenix in mid. But I mean, uh, yeah, he, they, they pulled on through anyway. They didn't let him have Fire Giant because of that, so. That's a perfect point. What I was, I was about to mention is that, you know, even though this was a good win for Titan, it's a big play for them to be able to think, this is not an easy win, right? I mean, we're looking at, you know, Zero is not playing one of his most comfortable characters. Uh, SK Gaming coming in very overconfident. We know there's a, a recovery team. They're able to come back very, very quickly. But again, you, you see mistakes like Ataraxia, uh, you know, almost giving the game up there. I mean, he died to a Phoenix at 35 minutes after they had a perfect deicide. And then FG was barely recovered. I mean, SK almost got that FG, which allowed him to go pound for pound. And then they just barely stole it back and ended it. So I don't think this was as clean cut as we're saying it is. I think this is definitely an even true. match. And SK is going to come back very angry and very hot and heavy in this match. I agree with you there. I mean, there were a lot of big things to take away from that, like how SK were able to hold the line as long as they were able to. I mean, the pressure that came out of Titan was too much at that point. But kudos to SK for, you know, keeping the dream alive there. But again, to reiterate, the challenges that are going to come in game two for them, you know, Titan's not backing down, tons of confidence, 
If you're SK, you are you're back to the drawing board and you're trying to figure yeah. out what the next approach is. Honestly, I feel like SK going into game two, what they really need to do is just clear out their heads and just reprioritize picks. And you, it's funny that you mentioned uh, the hold on the left Phoenix. So uh, I, I don't think SK realized the priorities going into that because they were like, all right, we need to shut the tanks. All right, we need to kill the DPS. So the major reason why SK held that was because Adaraxia died immediately. Like, he was outright just, he got deleted off the earth. So, <laughs> that, and it's funny because those are one of the key deaths that almost brought the comeback for SK. They need to make sure that going to that, we saw a lot of, like, you know, Zeros would go in. He didn't really know who to go on. He couldn't really pinpoint or grab anyone to really start the DPS on. And it just created a lot of confusion, which is why you saw, like, almost like these ranked style kind of brawl fest. Like, it's like, oh, well, what are you doing? Are you feeding? Like, it was just crazy. Yeah. So, I think going into it, they, the shot call needs to be a lot more clear, and like they need to really focus during the middle of the match, which is hard, by the way. Who, what, which, which person is the biggest problem, and make sure that person gets silenced or dead or Prioritize. something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we kind of lost sight of what happened in the qualification process for the regional championships as well as the world championships. It's something we we talked about a lot as a commentary team for this my pro league is that you know Europe has the depth. I mean, they have the most high-level teams. I mean, and North America doesn't go as deep as far as how many are competing at the same level. And I think we lost sight of that. I mean, this is Titan, right? They, we just heard them up on stage. They were yelling, getting ready. Their heads are coming together. And I think that the biggest problem is SK needs to take this seriously, and they weren't. Uh, you know, that last match, I mean, I, I was going in and saying, I, you know, I'm an NA fanboy. I live here, right, in the yeah. United States. But I'm holding this flag up now because that was a fantastic show, regardless of what ended up happening. I'd like to see maybe some pocket picks here. I feel like they're still holding on to some kind of strategy that may end up working for them. Uh, obviously, they want to highlight reels. One of the things we saw yesterday that worked very well for SK Gaming was the fact that when reels is left unchecked, they're almost guaranteed to win. In this game, they put pressure on them. At 30 seconds in, they forced the leash of the blue. Then they came back and took it at 45 seconds. They put a lot of pressure in the lane and ganked him consistently. Shut down reels, bolster Confrey, and go for Maniac. I don't think they were ready for that kind of well-designed strategy. Yeah. I, th I think for sure Titan recognized their weak spots and what they need to patch up on, and it, it was an excellent just performance and it was an excellent showing for sure uh, going into game two. I just honestly hope though that Reels for sure, like I, I do, so I do like the fact that Reels does do kind of crazy, you know, like Zatman-esque plays where it's like 3v1, 2v1, right, but I, go. I hope going into game two he keeps it up. Well, let's, fans are coming in game here. Two, this is game number two, Titan versus SK Gaming. If you're a fan, we'll give it up right now. Show us where your alignment is. Do you want Titan to take this and end this series, or SK, come on back and push it to game three? Bakasur and Serget gone instantaneously. We've got two more bands. That's going to be a Captain Twig, Ogni gone, and a Zeros taken off. Oh, actually, that's SK Gaming banning out the Al Guang, so both those gone. That may have been one of the quickest banning phases we've had, man. Whoa. Like, these guys knew right away what they wanted. Thor's going to get selected by Titan. Apollo, got to take it. On reels, absolutely. Love I love it. Absol and they steal it. Sylvanas yeah, was not banned this game. That's also key. Apollo. Yeah, I agree. Go. Apollo, Sylvanas locked in as well, so that's two there. All it's right. act it's actually really funny that um, SK, I think it's becoming common. If you are second pick and you're not first pick, I think it's become really like aware in this tournament. You're banning out Aquang and Serket. Those two characters cannot get through. With those two gods on perma ban status, that frees up a lot of first pick situations, which is why you see the flexibility in Titan's ban. So like, we're, we're gonna ban Baka, we're gonna ban Agni. Confi Osiris, Amir, Kanye Life. I mean, is, is this really working for them, Zims? Yeah, they're going for the early game aggression yet again. I mean, you have an Emir and a Thor. Who can you, who can fight that? And and I mean, oh, I, I hate to see this again on screen. That's a zero's call. That that's something I just didn't want to see. Uh, that right there might cost them this tournament. I d I don't necessarily think so, but however, I do want to point out that Titan does have, like I was saying, the three-man front line. Thor, generally one of the tankier assassins. Osiris solo lane and Ymir support. Like, it's really hard yeah, to break through that. but you said it yourself, though. You, you know, if you have that three-man front, you know, with what SK is building here, that's going to be so hard to fight against. Period. You know, like, that's already something that, that we did not want to see Kali again. And that is going to be Whoa. the case. They're just countering. 
And uh, it's going to be another band lay down. Aphrodite removed. This is actually plays into what you're talking about, Ali. The three-man front. But they're going to replace it again with it. So this is a double heel lineup. We've got Ra and we've got Sylvanas. Great support. Great sustain. You know what's actually interesting here is that Vulcan was banned because they know that you know Pretty Prime on Vulcan is serious business. So I'm actually curious to what Pro uh, Pretty Prime picks here to be because they're going to have Ataraxia and Pretty Prime be the main carry sources. So I'm, I'm interested. What is he going to pick to complement his team lineup right now? You know, I'd actually really like to see SK be very passive in the beginning. We've seen that Repikos early with Thor can change the game, and they've got a Kali, lock it in, go for that late oh game. Oh, my God. Uh, and Nox, Nox, the first Nox of the tournament. That's ladies and right. Honestly, it's been banned so much. SK wow. lost this draft. I think Titan won this draft by miles. Uh, I mean, l l let's be honest here. This early game is crazy. Well, What's amazing is this... Here? So much CC to protect Nox and, and everyone. Like oh, I, God. I can't see well, Titan's team losing. You need a strong to go up against Nox, or you can't get Who pushed out. Who do you pick out. though at that point? What? what? Uh, there's so much. Rob Rob made to get a bruise. There it is. Chalk. You, have, you have to match it. All Remember? right, folks. Well, well, that's gonna do it, guys. Is everything's gonna be locked in? We'll see how this Nox works out for Titan. Well, let's just throw it over to the casters. Take it away, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the casters' desk. We are here and live once again for game two of SK versus Titan. Gandhi, Titan have a one game advantage and on picks up bands, like the analyst said, it looks like Titan won. Yeah, I, I, I think Titan came out on top. I don't think SK Gaming even remembered not, right? Because when we were sitting here talking about it, I was like, what do, what do they have? We both, Uwa, we both. Poseidon. And then it was like Nox, and I go, oh my God. Now when Nox got released, she was severely weak and people were like, I don't know if we should play her or not, but now she's like, Hebo on steroids. Yeah, and the, the thing about the Nox as well is when we were look, talking about picks and bands, there was Agni banned away by Titan. That's one of Prime's gods. Vulcan banned away by SK Gaming. Yep. That's one of Prime's gods. Then they picked Rara away, and it was like, well, what are you going to play now, Prime? Oh, wait, Nox. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the interaction between Nox and Ra is huge, right? Because if she lands her ultimate, basically if she gets an ultimate on someone, any ability they use does damage to themselves. So you can see how Nox versus Ra, who has to spam his heals, his two, which is basically a slow and also a blind, and his celestial beam, that's his damage. It it's a perfect damage. counter. The only thing with this Nox pick, Nox does great burst damage. She's good in the lane. She can push out very, very well. The only thing about the whole composition of SK Gaming, they're not very spammy on abilities. So. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're hopping into game number two. Put your hands together for Titan versus SK. So straight away in this one, both teams going to rush up the mid lane. As you can see, Kanye Life going to lead the way. He's, Actually, he's, got, he's got the blink online early again. We'll see if he goes for it again. We'll see if they're going to try and catch someone. Because one thing that everybody in EU knows is where Badger goes. Badger can <laughs> always get in trouble. Kanye Life, he's on the hunt. You can kind of see SK is very, very timid right now. They're like, well, there's Badger. He's sitting at tier two. Badger seen him. And they didn't even get any deep wards down. So they really committed they on this. They were looking this. for Badger to pick him off at the start of the game. This is what a lot of people do against SK Gaming when they're chaos side. Badger has the tendency to do the positioning that he's doing right now. He's on the wander. He's trying to come down for the ward. And a lot of times he gets himself caught by doing so. Well, Badger's actually going for the ward right now. It's going to be deep. Now, you get that ward down there so you get vision of the enemy team doing the blue buff. And that just basically lets you know, even though you know 99% of the time they're going to be there, now it's just power. A Maniac, though, he's actually positioned himself here to look for a bit of a cheeky steal with the axe, maybe. They don't know this is a Oh, no, he, 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 he's not going. He's going full cheeky. He's, he's got Hand of the Gods level one spotted. as well. They're going to try and zone him out. He's got to be careful on the positioning here. Kanye doing his best. The hog goes down. It's okay, though. It was a nice little attempt from Maniac there. They did have to waste a hog on it, though. Yeah, but unfortunately for him, they're still going to be okay. They have another hog online. So they're going to be okay in this scenario. Now, when we take a look at this matchup, right, we have Osiris going against Chalk. What this is, is this is a lot of damage mitigated with awkward counters where no kills end up happening. Keep an eye on the junglers for that engagement. Once again, left-hand side, look at the early aggression coming out from SK Gaming, sorry, from Titan, rather. They pushed in the wave, and they're going to go straight for the back harpy, steal these ones away. I like the decision here about the red buff, though, coming out from SK Gaming. They did the red buff themselves to stop that oh, look at this. invasion. Look at this. Oh, Captain Twig's going to back out. 
Kanye Life already with the rotation. It's 105. This is very fast. Now, what's scary is the fact that Adorexia hasn't been in lane, so he's only level two. So he's going to be a little bit behind Reels, who's already level three. And they just want to secure this speed. Speed is so important, Hindu. It is. One big thing that SKD Gaming did here is but the reason they took their own jungle, the duo lane took it, was because the early game from Titan is so strong. They don't want to give anything older. Wait! Well, their astral arrows are only going to do so much damage. Now, Sylvanas, not only does he have a heal over time, but it also heals his wave. You can see his basic attacks do AoE damage, so you can see how easy it is for them to push. Yeah, not just the, not just the, the gods in the game, but the minions too. So those auto attacks will be regenerated, which means the push will always stay happening for a consistent amount of time. In the middle, Nox, a.k.a. Pretty Prime, going against Ra. Ra is notorious for having amazing clear. He's always super safe. He has the heal. But versus Nox, Nox has just as good of a clear. Yeah, the clear on Nox is fantastic. The Siphon Darkness is very, very bursty. Got really low cooldown as well. It's like three second cooldown. That's without cooldown reduction as well. The only problem she can suffer with is a bit of sustain in terms of mana. So she's got to make sure she makes those count. Now, it's 220 right now. Levels are about level 4, level 5. That's standard. But the eye is on the mid harpies. That's going to be in the center of your UI on the left and on the right. They're going to be coming up at 315. Whoever controls these most likely is going to win the Euro game. Well, I mean, with the early game, we already said, like, Titan came into this with the analysis on the Death Sim Star, and now like, we're talking about the fact that, yeah, the early game is all Titans. And that's the thing that SK have to push through, look towards the later stages, and try and get Carly online. Well, Repikas, he's rotated over here. He is level 5. He's going to go ahead and go with Kanye Life. They might try to catch Badja. Badja still in lane as Sylvanas. Kanye Life's going to show his face. Will Repikas go? The Harpies are going to be up in 10 seconds. No one in any kind of position here from Titan. The push is good. The push is a good decision coming out from Titan. It means that somebody has to stay to defend that wave. If they don't, it's going to go to the farm. And now they can group as a full unit and try and collapse on someone. And that target's going to be zeros. But zeros, very, very wisely, Hogs gets out over the wall. Good yeah, they, they, this is a big win right here for SK Gaming. They're going to walk away with both Harpies. So that's going to give them really a little bit of an advantage in the experience department. It does give them a lead as well. But now again, what? Once again, Kanye breaks in, but he's a mess to the face. Real good, nice timing on that one. And so he's going to be able to back away once again, thanks to the heal coming out. Now, you can just see, right? I mean, Adaraxia did his best. He landed like five autos on Badger, and Badger pressed two and healed himself to full. Yep, <laughs> that's exactly how the lane's going to go for the most part. They can push backwards and forwards, but relatively, this eight lane will be even for the most part. Now, Ross started off with Tier 1 of Book of Thoth, and the reason why he can do that is because he doesn't really need potions. Normally, we see people start off with Tiny Trinket because it's 540 and you can buy other potions, but Ra, you have a heal built into your kit that's better than a pot. That's right. Now, the thing is, though, right now, you can see the speed buff's about to come up, and Repikas is coming around the side looking to try and steal this one away. The wall comes down. The spin, the buff still stands for now, though. The hog is from Repikas, and now it looks like Carly's in trouble. Has oh. to use the orbit to stay alive. Repikas is going to have the wall soon. The no stone way. hits, and Repikas with the end hand to bring him down. First Blood goes once again to Titan. Maniac is watching his blue buff just get destroyed, and now he's watching his health get destroyed as Repikas is going to force him all the way out on the left side. Reels and Rom battling toe-to-toe. -to -toe. No one really getting an upper hand yet. The boxing match has to kind of favor Rom right now, but in the middle, we are seeing Nox. Oh, He's got it very easy in front of her, but there's the heal from Rom. He's going to get pulled in by Nature's Grasp. And now Pretty Prime doing everything snipe, he can. The snipe. damage is there, but he doesn't have to follow up a wall denied. That should keep him alive. Oh. The silence happens. Oh, oh he ran man. into oh, it. He's so close to a minion. Just one auto would have been good from an archer. He archer, had, where are you? He had 40 health. He like 40, play. as in four and a zero. The good thing is Twig is going to be able to heal up. The big thing you can see, the sustain from Ra and Sylvanas is very strong. 
all SK Gaming are looking to do is survive. Raw is not going deep. Captain Spake's playing the safe in mid lane. He's making sure that Thor can't come with the Anvil of Dawn. And in doing so, it means that they can keep trying to keep the gold lead at a minimal loss. So the late stages of the game, Carly can finally get to that point we were talking about last game. Yeah, when you kind of look at the jungle matchup here between Thor and Kali, Kali, super late game based, wants to go on one target, explode them. Thor, very early game based, has a lot of CC, just wants to destroy, just like this. Here comes Tectonic Rift, double tap. Look at how low Zeros is. The wall's gonna be there, Frost Breath. Nope, Ice Carpet doesn't have enough to clean it up, but just like that, that is the pressure. It's all about survival. Zeros wants to base here, he can't because the mid harpies are spawning. Repicast in position, but just gonna lead the way in for his team here. They do get reset for a moment. Wow. Sylvanas has got the root after Spadger, the left ones do go in favor of Titan, and imagine should be fine. The double heal's too much. Oh, but Zeros is coming back in. Zeros wants some of this. He's going to try to take out Rappi. And you can see he has to get out of there as quick as he can. As reels with the across the sky almost made his life a misery. Now, Repikas got out of there very, very fast. And with, on top of that, he went back. He took the back right harpy. So now he's dropping red buff for his mid. He's like, hey, pretty prime. Don't worry, bro. I'm a good teammate. I gotcha. At the same time, Confu took the right hand harpies as well. So both those camps went in favor of Titan. The got experience lead, 1,500. Gold lead of 1,000 as well right now for Titan. It's not a substantial lead, but it's something. And it needs to keep growing to allow them to make sure that they get a good enough lead that once again, Kali does not hit that point that we're so used to seeing. Now, Kali, she really has to wait until chin size is online, which at this rate, it's gonna, she's got 1200 gold in hand, but that's gonna really just finish off her pen boots. And then from there, she then has a lot of money. It's like 3,200 gold for chins. It is quite expensive, but it's still really cost effective, even though it's one of the most expensive items. Yeah, I, he has hey. to take out a second mortgage to get it. Pretty much, but, but he does get that second mortgage online, Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> That's when things start to become a big issue for the boys of Titan, is making sure that it doesn't happen. Well, Thor went back. He bought himself a maze. That's going to turn into a Jotun's Wrath, giving him some CDR, a little bit of mana, and just penetration. Repikas hanging around the mid lane here on the left hand side. He's looking for an opportunity to get something over the wall if he can. Zeros, if you notice, he's just trying to farm. That's all he's intended trying to do. But the problem is he's only level eight. Why is he so far behind? The, one of the reasons is he lost a speed buff. The second reason is his dual lane took the red for safety of not losing that early on. Comfrey getting forced all the way out. Maniac is right on his heels. They're the same level. Confrey could be taken out, but he's really just baiting this because Repikas on the minimap. Look at Thor. He's getting ready to get in position. He walked over a ward, though, yep. and Confrey's calling out, like, hey, Chuck's missed. That's, there's probably a ward somewhere there. It's speed buff time as well, Gandhi, and when speed buff time's available, they're not going to go for that. They're actually going to go for Maniac here. Get some good damage off, but he's going to silence him out, force him away again. When you look at his item build, it's going to be oh, very difficult to kill him, but look at the rotation coming in. Captain Twig, Siri Payne's going to be there. Repikas, you got to be careful, buddy. And and he's going to use Mjolnir's attunement to get out of oh. there. Repikas is going to dive. Siri oh, Payne barely misses. Spin to win's going to be there. That was the target. Zero walks out with full health. Left On the left side, side Hindu. Reels is in trouble. So he, yeah, Reels is in trouble. Ataraxia. Ah, they're confused. They change cards every game. He's in a bit of trouble. But Prime Blink's over the wall to secure him. Make sure he's safe. But they're looking for Reels now. Across the sky. The other wow. one. He's dead. He's dead. I'm sure he's going to die. I don't know about yes. that. Oh, there we go. Look at him just fall. His body from the sky that's so depressing. Meanwhile, Captain Twig taking a lot of damage here. The wall the right wall. in his face. In comes Godfrey. He's got the sickle on him, but does he have the follow up? He does not. Zeros forces him out there. He says, That is my rock. Captain Twig is playing the game of his life once again. I'm really pleased to see him back on the page. At the moment, though, it's still a struggle for SK Gaming. Reels dying there was so unfortunate. What, yeah. The thing with Nox's ultimate that a lot of people don't realize is it does initial damage, and at the end it does the damage again at the stun here. And if you use the ability, once again it does again. Chuck getting caught out near the harpies. Not too much damage though. Once again, he's still Chuck. He's still yeah. very tanky. Well, he's got a full-blown <laughs> rune-forged hammer, right? So he's got physical protection, but it also gives him 350 health at a very cheap cost. Pretty much every single warrior who goes into the solo lane, depending on the matchup, will build this item. That's and they cool. rush it. That's correct. Well, at the stage of the game, with 10 minutes in, it's only 2 to 1 in terms of score right now. However, it's a 2.8k exper experience lead, a 1,200 gold lead in favor of Titan. And as you can see, SK Gaming are just trying to rally it around and keep soaking experience. The problem is, is that with everyone sharing, Zeros is still taking a long time to get online. 
when you look at the player damage, traditionally at by 10 minutes and 30 seconds, you see that the solo lane has the most. Right now, Nox leading the way with 4,500. Next highest is Thor with 3,400. Gold Fury is a contestation point right, right now, and as you can see, Titan have already warded that one up. Kanye in a good position to do so. So the war coverage is started again. Sentries are, are the main mission for these two teams, and already you can see them starting to flow out. This is good though, but SK's been a bit slack on them, like last game, and a few people mentioned beforehand. Look at Kanye. Kanye Life trying to get in a position here. Thor's rotating as well. They're gonna try to converge. He just walked over it. Here comes the blink. The wall hits. Badge is gonna get frozen. That's a lot of big damage. In comes Repicons. The spin to win. There it is. Breath of Terror doesn't matter. Reels is gonna push out. Ataraxia versus Reels. The battle. Kali coming in from the right side. Kanye trying to save it. Ataraxia, the wall. It's gonna give him time. Pretty Prime gets a kill in the mid lane. And just like that, Zeros gets denied. I don't know exactly how Twig down in the mid lane, but he's probably on a rotation to try and defend against Badger going down there. But now Titan have an opportunity here. Four members grouped up, only a Hunter and a Jungler together to try and defend against the Gold Fury. Zero's going to clear out a ward. I don't think there's a lot he can do. Rappi Cass is on zoning duty there. He throws out the Lash, but that's all she wrote. Titan take the first Gold Fury of the game at 10, 11 minutes in. And this is the same story as we saw last time. 3,800 experience in favor of Titan, 2,600 gold in favor, in favor of Titan as well. So when you're looking at it, that's going to just continue to grow until SK can really pull together. The mid harpies are getting ready to come up in just a little bit. You can see the one on the left is going to be up before the one on the right. SK obviously has the timer. They're in a position to get so, but they have to shove this midway first, which is exactly what Captain Twigs did. Interesting decision coming out from Kanye Life here as well. He's got Ancient Blade online right now, Gandhi. How now, that dare he? Itch, it, that could go into Witch Blade early, and it could it's, go into, into the Witch Blade. It's, well. it's like, going to go into the Wing Blade. Wing Blade. I know you meant. That's what I, I got you, buddy. So but it could go Witchblade to deal with the fact there's a Kali. Yep. So make sure she's still weaker and weaker for as long as possible. A very physical, heavy squad they've got. Only really well blinking. Oh, from the baby! The damage is online. Prime is the focus point, but is your mate doing good work for oh, us here? Oh, God! Look at the damage. Zeros is still alive because of Indestructible. Repikos gets pulled back. Kanye left trying to peel. SK. He can't do it. Thor's going to teleport away. In comes Confrey. Confrey says, here's a tether for you, buddy. He's looking for Zeros. He can't find them. Sickle's going to deter it. No one dies. Hal, your guess is as good as mine. Well, Prime died and there was a team of Titan that were the ones that engaged. They're going to get the Harpies in trade for that. Meanwhile, Reel's got a full wave of experience, going to put some pressure on the left. But if you check out the golden experience, once again, it was a jump in favor of Titan, and now it's starting to dip again. Now, Reels is able to push this entire wave there. He actually rotated what? around the back and shoved it again. So, looking at it, Ataraxia is going to be behind. Apollo has this advantage, and this is Reels comfort pick, like you were telling me, Hindu. It's both their comfort pick. That's the crazy thing. Ataraxia loves Apollo, as does Reels. And what a surprise to see. That's why it was first picked in most of the games. It's very important for those two hunters to try and secure that Apollo pick. It's important to both these teams. Nox damage increased up to 8,000. Curse Blade online for Chalk, which is going to go into a Witch Blade. And on the other side, Jotun's is there for Thor. That's going to be big for him. Kanye Life is trying to be as, as aggressive as possible. That movement speed from the Ancient Blade is going to help him out to close the gap a little bit more. Just going to check in to see what he's leveling here. He is maxing Frost Breath. A couple of points into great Glacial Strike. Wait for the wall, though, Gandhi. Because that wall, the more you level it, the longer the lifespan. It goes up for six yeah. seconds at max rank. Yeah, and it gets bigger. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, it just lives there forever. It's like an object in the map that you cannot do anything. Although, shout out to Osiris. He could just walk through it. Yep. He's going to go ahead and deter Badger. Just a little bit of a detour. Gotcha. Tectonic Rift's going to be there. Captain Twig, though. Oh, God. Kanye Life's in a lot of trouble. He's waiting for his teammates. Badge is able to get one. In comes Repicons crashing down. The heel's going to be Nox. there. Nox gets the hold on two people. They can't use any abilities or else the damage will hurt He's them. Dead. Captain Twig goes down. Zeros is on the other side. Badge is in a lot of trouble. Repicons trying to shred through the tree, but Zeros is there. Oh, my God. Nature's Transform almost hits him. Apollo's it. going up, though. Apollo is up in the air. Is he going to come down? He's looking for the kill on some Nox. Most cooldowns wasted. He's still going to have some damage there. Reels is oh, the That is reduction. Juke, real juke. No, no more juke for you, son. He's going to go down as well as Comfrey finds that kill. Zeros tries to make amends, but cannot. Wow. Zeros is going to go ahead and get away there with about 300 health. 
Now we're going to see Adorexi. He's going to get up in the business. He's going to start poking around here. Comfrey's going to rotate to the right, and he's just going to keep shoving this. He picked the right battle to go to, but he does have to be careful. Badger obviously has enough mana to go for a Nature's Grass, which is his pull. Adorexi gets sucked up under the tower. Well, he's he, he's dead. He's in a lot of trouble, so he's got to watch the positioning. Left hand harpies, though, go again once again to Titan, continuing to try and extend this lead further and further on in their favor. Maniac in the trouble again in the mid lane here. The wall is good. Gonna use the ju nice jump back to the axe there with the torrent. Just repositioned himself away from the trouble he got himself into, but right hand harpies are online shortly. And, and notice how Titan takes the aggressive path to every single harps. Most people will go back down and take the path closer to the tower. They go on SK's tower side. They're like, oh, well, you know what? We want to force the fight anyways. We have the lead. Bring it on. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Titan want to do. Now, they have the early game team, and everyone's been saying they outpicked SK gaming. At least the analyst did. The one thing to note, Prime with that blink on that Nox has been influential in the engagement. So talking about blinks, the Wiggy Buddy! And Prime picks up a kill onto Twig. Left hand side once again. It's a 2v1. Ataraxi is a bit brave here. Yeah, but he's got a tree to worry about. He's waiting for his teammates. Here comes the Calvary. Kanye Life trying to get there as fast as he can. Thor's going to come crashing down. Rills is in a lot of trouble to pull on Repicos. Do they have the damage? They do. Pretty Prime finds one. Oh my god, the tree is getting cut in half. Zeroes with four minutes stuns but he doesn't have any help can't get anything else more from that sk gaming lose two members one in the duo one in the solo sorry in the mid lane and now you can see maniac trading out once again with comfrey just keeping each other at bay gold fury started once again by titan pretty prime's gonna go for the zone here you can see the poke zoning. zero's just lost about a quarter of his health from one ability and now you're gonna see Comfrey zone. Maniac's gonna be there. Oh, Kanye Life got knocked up. This, it's all for contention. Maniac's able to get one. The Gold Fury is still there. Oh my God! Zeros is able to push back. He's gonna force them all. But he's forcing them off for now. But he may go down. He's still got the ultimate available. Now you can see that Ataraxi has turned up. He's gonna watch his positioning. Wow! But he might just take out Zeros. Maniac tanking up for some. Oh! And Captain Twig. And now it's SK Gaming. They've got him on the run. Wow! Maniac gets another one. Out goes now. They should be rewarded with the Gold Fury here. Pretty Prime, he does have the option. He can go back in this and get a little bit ballsy, but oh, he's got to be got careful. Damage. He's got damage. If he can find the silence of the damage, there's a little bit wow. of poke onto that raw. Good chunk, but he's only on zone into the ultimate. Only hits onto Maniac there. Maniac's quite happy to eat that one up. And Twig's like, come on, son. But Ataraxi is back. Ataraxia is there for the help side. Maniac, he's getting chunked right now. Ataraxia, he's missing a couple one. He's going to go into Astro Barrage. Oh, watch reels. He's going to go for it. Ataraxia, he wants it so bad. Badger now has the help side. Eyes on Kanye Life. He's on the right the side. Wall. There's the wall. Oh, There's the end. My God, the level of play. And now the Gold Fury still stands once again. And we're going to sit back and relax for a few seconds. Yeah, just a bit. A bit of excitement, guys. Just a little bit. Go get your soda pop and a six pack of cookies. Yeah, double warded all over there. You can see the sentry wards are going to go down again. Both teams going to reset back to base. The aggression for the Gold Fury was there. Mid Harpies are back up, and there might be some contestation for the right ones. Oh, Kanye's been so aggressive. So aggressive trying to see like Kanye that solo. Kanye went for the blink as well. I think he was expecting Repikos to kind of get up there a little bit quicker and follow up with the CC into Tectonic Rift. It would have been a kill, maybe, but. You know, it was still the right idea. As we take a look, Thor again going into the winged blade. So he's going to have full CDR, which means he's going to get about two ults in, depending on how long the team fight is, which is humongous. Well, so many teams start to realize this speed buff being taken away here by Titan, though, from SK Games. Zeros is busy dealing with the ward coverage at the Gold Fury pit. He was possibly trying to look for an opportunity onto Antaraxia, but. Not Captain find Twig. It. Captain Twig could be in a lot of trouble here. The tether, the tectonic rip, waiting for the frost breath. And he down he goes. Maniac in the middle, though. He's trying to force off Repikos. He's got Badger oh, behind him. Same with Zeros. And comes crashing Reels. Reels is going to use Beads. He's going to turn around. They got to get something out of this, but they can't find any synergy here. Zeros is just mindlessly Thor's running up. away. Thor's in the air. Thor's down. Oh, God, Hindu. And now you're going to see Godfrey take out Reels. Jack has to retreat. Like Zeros is in amongst them. Chop him to bits if you can. He's going to fight one, but he wasn't the target. And now Atarax is going to clean up. Turn round 160. Takes to the sky. Snipe. Snipe. Woo! Ataraxia delivering three blows with the Astral Barrage. Those are very, very difficult to hit. 
One man wow. still standing on SK Gaming. They can push onto mid lane. They can look for the Gold Fury shortly, and that's exactly what they're going to do. The only issue is that person in mid lane is Badger. He is the one with the Hawk 3. Kanye Life, not online yet. And he's the only one on the map with the Hawk 3 alive. Now, when you're looking at this, if you come from a different MOBA, you'll wonder why in the world is the Hunter soloing the Gold Fury? Well, he, he has developed dev gloves so the dev gloves give him full life so he has it healed up so it's he's not going to take any damage the amount of damage that the gold fear is going to do to him he's going to heal himself back up per hit that's correct. so it makes the most sense for him to tank it yeah so he tanks it for his team if, if in a bad situation and things go wrong he can reposition himself, precisely let somebody else take aggro um but most part you want to keep the guardian nice and healthy but this game it's one zero to titan in this series, it's a best of three to I go know. to the finals of the World Championship. And the favorites that everyone have been talking about, SK Gaming, are on the back foot. I just, I just want to point out the fact that Nox, she did go with the Warlock. Oh, hold the phone here. Kanye Life blinks in. There's the Frost Breath. The wall's going to be on the opposite side. Maniac, he's got to be Maniac careful. Amazing. Kanye Maniac's Life amazing. doesn't care. He's going to continue to aggress. Maniac is amazing. He baited out a lot of yep. stuff from that team now, so it's not going to be available from the blink. He's now on cooldown for Kanye. Troops do arrive. Knocks a little bit late to the party, but now it's time for SK to try. Kanye Life has to be careful with his positioning here. Osiris has him on the right. Tier 1 tower is still up. Badger is on the hunt. Apollo, however, does have ultimate, so he can come crashing down at any time. If he does rotate, he will lose that Tier 1, which is something he's willing to give up. Reels is trying to push to cover two lanes at the same time. Nox is now rotating in behind. They've not got a ward coverage for this one just yet. Look at the amount of wards for SK Gaming. Wow. This game is ridiculous. They have the whole map lit up like a Christmas tree. Titan now just looking. They're waiting to find anyone. Wards placed here. Ymir Kanye Life, 17. Next high is Thor with 9. 17 wards at 22 seconds. My God. Repika's going in. That's on Badger, though. It's not the person you want to focus good. into. The snipe was good. And Maniac on the front line trying to do it. Comfy's going to run away from that. Ataraxia took to the sky to buy some time. But there comes Reels diving in, though. Can they make something happen? The order comes out from Reels. Oh, and Pride takes down Reels again with that. Kanye tries to buy time. Twig takes his life. But it's a one for one exchange. A support for a hunter. Meanwhile, Where's the other hunter? Exactly what I was saying. They were willing to give up the trade there. I mean, Reels, or uh, excuse me, Ataraxia, there's no way he can rotate to that. So he's like, okay, Apollo, you want to crash in on my teammates? Cool. I'm going to at least get 2,000 gold for my team. And that's exactly what he did. And they came out on top on the fight. Titan looks amazing. 12,000 experience lead, nearly 13 right now, 9,500 gold lead as well, 23 minutes into this game. Gold Fury spawns about 2.5 minutes, but attention for Titan now should be turning towards this fire giant, because they can have Apollo just go left still and keep pushing for that Phoenix. M much like Al Guang, we had a feeling that Nox was going to be very, very strong going into the SWC, but we didn't know how strong. We looked at it and we were like, wow, 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 she, she seems to be heading like a truck but we didn't know how it was going to make an impact on the pro scene. Suffice it to say, it's here to stay. It's a little bit strong. It's been banned all tournament long. This is the first time we've really seen it, and it's going to be great to see it. If you get it to see it in the semis, or the finals, or the other semis going up. Ataraxia trying to start off this fire giant here. Were they baiting the fight there? Or was that, was that the actual play call? <laughs> I don't know. It could have been either or, really. I mean, the, the amount of damage Ataraxia has got right now because the Unicorn build is being worked on. He's got a lot for it. Another good wall from Kanye. Torrent's going to be used by Maniac, and he's just going to back away for now. They're just looking for a pick here, Gandhi, and they might fight one on Zeros. Zeros. He got locked up. He's going to jump away. Captain Twig's going to get up in the action here. Pretty Prime's going to use the shield to help himself out, absorb that axe. Here comes the rain call, and Adorax is going to get sucked up under the tower. He's got a dash. Don't worry about it. And now Maniac is pushed all the way back. He's going to jump up, try to aggress a little bit. Captain Twig rotated into the mid lane. He needs to be here. That is all five members of Titan on the right side. Comfrey leading the charge. Now it's Replicas. Zero, Zeros is going to be here. He's taking so much damage. Down he goes instantly. Kanye Life in the back. Comfrey's going to be still alive. He hasn't even been touched. The Titan is like the Titan are doing so well right now. They're trying to keep the pressure on to SK Gaming. Reels comes in on the backside though and does find Kanye Life. He might have to watch his position as Ataraxia tries to rotate round to make sure he can't come in. They the decision from him there, he didn't take the tier two, but he stops them for the time being. They're trying to find him now. If they can find Reels, Reels need to watch his position. Well, Reels does well. 
Osiris chasing you is like Michael Myers, right? Like you get hit with like a sickle, and then the next thing you know, he's right behind you, and he just destroys you. So it's very, very tough to deal with. But that was a big advantage once again for Titan. They take a tier two tower on the right hand side. The tier two tower on the left stayed standing. Reels wasn't able to stay there long enough to bring it down. So once again, a net win for Titan, not just on kills, but on objectives too. Titan has looked so good. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, behind the closed doors, Titan had lost just about every single scrim to the point where they were demoralized completely versus SK. SK won, only lost two games throughout the entire week that they were here versus them. That's what I've been hearing too, that, you know, Titan were the ones that were not favored coming into this. Everyone expected it would be SK to take this tournament. So many of us analysts as well have felt the same way, but right now it's Titan that have SK's neck on the chopping block. Yeah, left Harpy's getting ready to come up at this point. They're still significant, but not nearly as strong as they are in the early game. When you, when you take a look, Titan, they're up by 15,000 experience, dropped down to 14 and 10,000 gold. It's only going up from here. Osiris actually going with the Rune Forged after the chin size, so now he's going to be able to mitigate even more damage. Well, they're just all positioned around the fire giant again, and it's all down to Kanye. That's why we're getting all these close-ups of him, Gandhi, because his positioning is key. He's the one to lead from the forefront if the wall connects. Just like that one did, they might get a nice bit of poke damage off and catch someone out of position. They do get the poke. Now we're going to see Ataraxia this whole time. He's soloing Gold Fury, but SK has no wards. Oh, That's zero. three on the right side. Those zeros forced all the way out. Kanye is going to continue to chase. Who's he going to get? Oh. That's going to be Maniac. People are silent. Stox is going to get up in the action here, Hindu. He's going to try and chase on to Sylvanas. He's the focus because he's the one with the hog three. He uses the ultimate to disengage. Woo! Good slide from Trigger to Black, but doesn't really hit the right targets. Badger does fall. Reels does arrive to this fight, but can he turn it around? Real is going to get no. immediately and he's going to no. get erased off the map he's on the sideline for 35 seconds Delete it. down goes maniac all the way in the back captain twink gets hit as well he's forced into agus and now look at his health just drop zeros eyes on you buddy they're going directly to the fire giant maniac needs your help Zeros and Captain Twig have to go in. Zero's gonna turn his attention to Pretty Prime. Whoa. But the damage is insane. Ataraxia. No way, don't do it, he buddy. He takes the rainbow and is going for it. Slides to the back on Twig. Chasing oh. his mind again. The lead from Zeros to save the day. Meanwhile, the rest of Titan take down the Fire Giant. Fire Giant in possession of Titan. SK Gaming, they have one tier two tower left. Other than that, they have three phoenixes. Their back is completely against the wall. They have two tier one towers standing on the Titan side. This is a huge hill to climb. I, I've got nothing more to say about because Titan are in such a great position. They're in a fantastic. There's tier two tower left in mid, then they can start to keep pushing in. The way they've been engaging, the double wall combination of four and Mir has been brutal, especially when you've got Nox who can do so much damage so quickly. There's nothing they can do. And Reels is an artist with that across the sky. He comes into the fights at the right time, Gandhi, and the moment he does, Nox explodes him immediately. Nox not only does she have a Rata Tahuti, but she has 531 magical damage currently. That means a three and a two combo is going to chunk every single person. Here they go again. The Frost from Kanye after the blink. The wall is good to zone him out. Make sure he can't get an escape. And where is his escape going to be? Into Comfrey's clutches. Woo! Now you're going to see Apollo get caught up in. Oh, baby. From Rapid Cast. Kanye bringing that one down for the team. In mid lane, the tower's now going to fall down. The team of Titan this is scary. pushing on, looking for Phoenixes. There's only three members of SK left. This is scary. Captain Twig's down for 40 seconds. Reels, 42. Kanye doesn't care about the Phoenix. He wants blood. Spots Maniac's going to freeze him just to say who's boss. They chump through the first Phoenix. On to the left one. They're going to just work together. The minions are there. Kanye in the back. Tectonic Rift's going to hit a bunch of them. Comfrey's got the tether. This might be game if they win this fight. Maniac's at half health. They're going to go underneath. They're going to focus the Titan here. It's going to start to drop. The final. It's 53 seconds. Are they going to go to the finals? It's 40 set. 40 are the set is dropping. Are the going to the finals? Are the boys going to the finals? Are the boys going to the finals? Titan advances to the SWC Grand Finals. They have secured a bare minimum of $500,000. And look at the expressions on their faces. They've worked so hard, so very hard for themselves. 
Commiserations to the SK boys, but it's not over for them just yet, Gandhi. Nope. They will go to the third, fourth place matchup, and that'll be just as exciting to be against an NA team as well. Titan did an amazing job here, but their road is not done yet. Tomorrow, they will be sitting, waiting for their opponent in the grand finals. Coming up next, we will have Cogred taking on Cog Prime, but before we get into that, we are going to throw the golden boy at the Alienware Analyst Desk. All right, folks, welcome back to the Alienware Analyst Desk, and uh, you've given up. You've given up the, the European dream here, huh? I gave up. My SK is gone. Thailand pair very good. Now I'm uh, running for Cog. Okay. Like the rest of you. Okay. <laughs> nah, okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> and then his mic, his mic, he lost his microphone, so that's done. Okay, so, uh, you know, rip, rest in peace, earphone users. I'll okay. in, uh, in Titan. <laughs> okay, cool. Titan is a new hype. <laughs> Make up your mind. No, they're back into the old Titan that we saw in Germany. I believe they can win now. They can beat Cog, and EU will prevail. Okay, so still he holding. Will prevail. <laughs> even though he just said Cog will win, you have went back. Yeah, no, nah, okay. I was just uh, you're really you guys. Up. I don't know if I can you trust your opinion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, guys, congratulations to Titan. They're gonna go to the finals and play for 1.3 million dollars, people. That is ridiculous. Guys, give it up in the house for Titan. Give it up for Titan. Seriously, wow, incredible and some stellar play there out of them out of the gate, man. We were worried about the Kali pick again. But it just felt like uh, Titan. They just, they just had it. Yeah, you know, I, I, you, let, let's look at first blood here. So bring it back to Logitech first blood on screen. We've got four and a half minutes into the match, an evasion on Call Lee, and it's exactly why Zeros is not comfortable with this. Great wall. It's just textbook. I mean, this is not something you break down. This is something you watch, right? Like it's a movie. There goes the rotation. The stun, there's gonna be a stun right after. It gets the goes the hit and take it down, right? That was the end of the Nox ultimate, and that's just pure power. And this. Ladies and gentlemen, I, you know, if you're feeling good for Titan, feel even better. Because right now, I'm going to tell you why you like Titan. This team came out of the Amateur League, the Challenger Cup. They were by themselves not Pro League team. They came out of an open bracket Amateur League level weekend tournament to go on to the wild cards to win that, to go on to the regional championships, to take first place in that and go to the Smite World Championship for $2.6 million. Be the underdog against SK Gaming. Come out with no faith in the crowd and go 2-0 undefeated, taking down SK Gaming. These guys are winning the hearts of everyone around the world. It's a great story. It's a great story there, you know, of a team that just came from nothing to now next to everything. That's right. Zimp, now that uh, Titan has secured their spot in the finals, uh, I guess, you know, one, I know you said here, you, you flip-flop, right? Which is completely <laughs> fine, you know, it's all right. Uh, we, won't, we won't harm you for that. But how do you feel about this Titan squad? I mixed it up. I'm in Titan all along. Okay. Uh, oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I thought it was Titan slash OMG. <laughs> yeah, for, for first place. Of course. No. <laughs> okay. I, I, I feel like Titan now is like, this is what I'm used to seeing, right? I've been like picking on the. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. Those are SimStar's is picks. This, is this the graphic from earlier? Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's a production error. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, Way to go, production. I, I could have swore that the T cross there on that T for Titan looks like <laughs> OMG. Nothing there looks like Titan. That's weird. I don't, I don't, I don't see anything. Do you see anything? I don't Allied, see do you see anything? anything? Nope. I don't like it's that. a language <laughs> thing, and I'm not. It's a language thing. Oh, is that what it is? Translation? Yeah, it's translation. Something went wrong. enough. Uh, no, seriously though, Titan, <laughs> I've been picking on him all week, you know, for their poor performance. Right here, right now, you have the Titan that I wanted to see. Okay. And they came back strong. What is working This is tough I, love. Just, That's what it is. So it was tough love. It's just love. Seriously, now they're playing good. This is the same Titan that beat SK back in Germany. And I mean, SK was our scream partner for those that week, the entire boot camp. We screamed them, great guys. I love them. I hope they don't hate me too much for my... So question for you, Zim. This entire week, SK Gaming and Titan were screaming. Uh, we've been in the room, we talked to them, we would experience with the players and getting in their heads. SK Gaming went a total, the last time we were in that room talking to them, 16 and three against Titan, just constant scrimming. What's up with that? Same thing happened in Germany actually against us. Uh, the scrims weren't really that good from their side. They ended up winning the whole thing and maybe now the same thing's happening. Maybe the scrims, I don't know, some players maybe just don't take it as seriously as the actual uh, tournament. I mean, okay. 
maybe the nerves don't get to them. You, you hear him screaming enough. Titan all the time, like, you know, before the games, we are Titan and all that, you know, getting hyped up. And it just seems like they're doing something right in the tournaments. I don't know, they're tournament monsters. Maybe not scrim monsters, I don't know. I, well, of course, uh, another fun fact that our production had noted, um, none of us pick Titan in the top two. So none of us have nope. Titan going to the finals. Uh, you know, I can I can have that excuse. Because, you know, and uh, the crowd agrees with me. No, I'm sure Cock Prime's walking on the stage. <laughs> um, but uh, no, but I can have that excuse. You guys can't. You guys have no excuse. Okay, so I'm just saying, called out, called out, called out, called it, out. It's the language barrier. It's the language. <laughs> you can't do that. I can do that. Okay. Um, well, let's go ahead, jump right into uh, you know some of the highlights here. Uh, of course, our One what is second. this going to be? One second, oh, guys, Zimstar, you chose uh, OMG. Over let's us. do a full shot. No, that, that's the production error. Not, 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 it's an error. No, what's that? Oh, I what's the Titan. error? What's the error? I said Titan. I promise. No, so, yeah, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let's help, help this young man no, out. Hold on, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Who, who are you? I'm Captain Coach, uh, coach and manager for Team Titan. For Titan in the grand finals of the Smite World Championship worth $2.6 million. Hey, Zimstar, uh, introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Owen oh, a Bird for, uh, I'm the coach and analyst oh for Titan. So we got double coaches going on. Uh, so Two coaches. what exactly yeah. happened, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of people. Out. So, you know, winner of the launch tournament for $200,000, Zimstar. <laughs> just, just put your hand on his face. Poor thing. <laughs> this guy, My goodness. he didn't have any faith in you. And he's an analyst for this let's event. Get this, what what, what actually happened? Let's get a real one. So I'm not holding this little thing here yeah it looks so, like you know what actually <laughs> happened for you guys I mean what what was going through your you and your team's heads when you were going on stage here up against SK gaming first game? Uh, yeah. The, yeah I mean the first game we yeah. came out we Let's were pretty confident right we were okay. prepared uh, we heard what Zimp had to say uh, we were ready to come back and just prove him wrong so this is all just to turn Zimp down oh, yeah. so this is thanks to me I just fired him up and they just executed it Okay, it so you know, obviously, this whole time. That, that must have been it. That the must have been it. This is the, yeah. the best impromptu interview we've ever had. But at the same, oh, there it is. Just a <laughs> reminder. Just a I reminder. I want to show you the uh, that, That's China right there. So obviously, you know, we broke down the matchups. Uh, Confrey, definitely one of the ones we were talking about not being strong enough. He dissolved any thought of that today. You know, shout outs to Confrey and the whole entire Titan lineup. You know, what actually inspired you guys to be able to pull this ahead? Well, I think we make use of the, the of the underdog position always. We love to be in that position, but on top of that, it's it's the team. Like we're one team, and we connect ourselves that way. And like you said, there's always people telling that players aren't good enough, and I'm not sure if that's true. But as a team, like we are one unit, and that's how we win. That's awesome. Well, we welcome you guys to the stage. We're actually going to talk to some of the players a little bit later here. So thank you so much for tuning on. Uh, we're going to continue on with the analyst segment. Uh, <laughs> we got this let's, microphone. Let's analyze up, uh, that, that impromptu here, interview. Wow. Let's, okay. Well, <laughs> while we're doing that, we'll just bring some pretty graphics on screen. All right. It's time it's for the, uh, yeah, pretty graphics. Uh, uh, actually, speeding up pretty, pretty, pretty prime. prime. He That's is going to be your gamer launch player of the game, playing that mid position 17.0 KDA. Good stuff out of him. A 10 killing spree. He is pretty. He is pretty. Look at that face. My goodness. And that hair. So the killing spree 10, that's absolutely phenomenal. And he kind of drove this with Nox, right? And one thing to put on this is, you know, like it was, it was, we were talking about during the break, Golden Boy, the fact that Nox is a New York character that just got reworked a little bit, uh, buffed a little bit, and you know, obviously was was banned for about two weeks, as new characters often are uh, in the ranked matches. So some teams don't really pick her up. So, you know, the fact that Frey Prime has been practicing a lot, being able to pick up a character like this and use it in competition, uh, something like MLC Stealth has been as well, I know that. Uh, so maybe we'll see him in the upcoming matchup. But, you know, this has been a fantastic moment. Remember, guys, I have to reiterate uh, with this this trophy sitting in front of me, all eight Pantheons hanging out with the Mjolnir in the Tectonic Rift. This team came out of the Amateur Cup, the Challenger Cup, and came all the way here to defeat the Titan of SK Gaming and show what they're made of. That's right. Some pretty cool stuff. Congratulations to Titan once again. While we go ahead and, uh, you know, go into our next steps here, we're actually going to take a uh, quick, quick look. I believe we have a support video right. coming up here. So, uh, you know, of course, a lot of the roles in, in Smite, you know, everything plays such a factor, uh, you know, and we've been highlighting them all throughout the weekend. So let's go ahead and check out how impactful support is to a team. Um, my role for Cognitive Prime is support, and I got into that role Maybe a year and a half, two years ago, um, I was actually lane partners with uh, Kiki, and we did this weird thing where we just mixed and matched like whatever 
our gods were to make the best lane we could. And uh, it came to the point where we had to choose who was going to be support and who was going to be the carry. And he just had, I think, one or two more carry gods in his god pool. And then I just ended up playing support. Pretty much what support does is they they have a lot of pressure on them as far as like having to hog the objectives and stuff like that. And uh, supports are part of sort of like the, tri the trio combo of mid, support, and jungle. And they are a pretty big part of the mid fights as well for securing the mid herpes. Support is really important because you have to protect your whole team. You got to keep wall control for a mid lane. And also you have to protect your hunter the first 10 minutes and after that you start rotating. And other than that, you just have to tank everything, so that's why it's important to have a tank. I play support, and support is generally about just supporting your team and keeping the ward top, keeping the vision up, and just shot calling. The best gods for the support role are Geb, Bacchus, Athena. They've been so back in the mirror there. Um, the support god pool isn't ginormous, so they've, you've seen a lot of the same guys for a long time now. Um, I think obviously there's like a lot of high tier picks for a support role, like Geb, Sylvanas, um, Bacchus, and Sobek are probably the, the highest tier picks. And then obviously Athena has that global presence across the map. And then um, I think those are probably the top five for support. Best guys for support would be, I would say, Sylvanas and Possibly Athena, at least for my playstyle, because I like to be aggressive. The best gods for support have been pretty static. Geb, still top tier, probably number one, followed by Athena and Sylvanas. He's a very good new addition to the support rotation. Uh, late game supports, pretty much, you gotta find out who's doing the damage and who's doing the damage to your backline, and then just try and peel them off your team. and. It sort of depends on the character, but for the most parts, what the meta is right now is the Guardians are trying to peel off uh, like the hard engage junglers and uh, just trying to keep your mages and your AD carries alive. As a support late game, I think it's mainly about being the initiator, uh, being the target caller because you have a lot more control because there's not a lot of skill shots that's supposed to be hit as a support. Uh, support late game is all about when to initiate. You want to look for people to group up on the enemy team, whether you're Geb blinking in or Athena looking for a taunt. If you can make sure to get three or four people inside of your skill at the time, then the whole team fight's going to go your way. It's actually different every single team fight. Um, a lot of people initiate, um, for the most part, it's a lot of initiation, but after that, it's all peeling. Um, sometimes you chase, sometimes you have to turn around and peel for everybody and use your ultimate to peel. But, uh, Again, it's situational every time. One of my most memorable moments was the game I played Bacchus against Cog Prime. I think I got a lot of good uh, bounces and ults in that game, and um, I think that performance actually got me player of the week for the SPL. So yeah, I think that's the one that stood out the most to me. Well, I think the most memorable moment in my host my career was still when I stole the Fire Giant against Cognitive in the first game and we ended up winning that game where we were actually behind and we ended up winning that first game so our morale was so high that we ended up winning the second game as well. I think that was the best moment. As a support, the most memorable moment for me are always those moments when you get your adrenaline pump pumping to go take a Gold Fury or a Fire Giant. Anytime you steal one of those, it's a memorable moment. All right, folks, welcome back to the Alienware Analyst Desk as we break down all the action and, you know, what we witnessed in that last matchup there between Titan and SK. If you're just joining us, well, you missed one heck of a matchup between Titan and SK Gaming. Titan has punched their stamp into the grand finals. They will be playing for $1.3 million. Jeez, I can't even... $1.3 million, okay? These are, like, real dollars? This is real... These are Monopoly bucks, folks. This is real money. Okay, and they're going to be playing for that. So, so I, I get my Bugatti. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> yes, that's right. Actually, someone will get one after this. Of course, uh, you know we have to talk about uh, you know all the things that we had uh, witnessed in that matchup. Right. Uh, you know, but most importantly, the Alienware play of the game. That's right. Right, because Ataraxia yet again amazing goes off. I mean, this guy was a force to be reckoned with. Set this up, Jack. Look it up. He's on Rom, right? And the, the focus on the right target is important here. The dunk came down. He knew his teammate was coming. Immediate disengage coming out from Repikos there in the jungle. Now turning back on his target. 
And for whatever reason, they're just chasing around Prime. They're not looking for Ataraxia. He's being left unchecked. This is kind of the story of the day. Leaving Hunters unfocused will end up with a lot of dead friends. I mean, you just cannot leave him alone. There's so much damage coming out. And it's late game ROM, right? He's got a huge steroid. His attacks go through walls. A nice slow. He's even got a cripple in his kit. And if you focus him, of course, that's the big part of it. He's going to go up in the air. But Ataraxia has stepped up to the plate. In fact, even when... People were saying Titan was looking super weak yesterday up against OMG. Adoraxia was still hitting the charts. Yeah, and I think that's the more surprising part as well. Like, you know, this is a team that was struggling day one against OMG. It was like... OMG, though. Yeah, I mean, OMG, though. Oh, OMG. OMG though. Oh. oh, man, dude. Uh, no, but seriously, though, think about this, right? Like, there, there were so many question marks over their heads, right? No one knew. And, and here comes Titan with this SK matchup. And look at just the, the, so the strength of this squad. So incredible. This matchup, though, uh, look at the map control. You could see that it was a lot more balanced out than it was in game one, yeah. where uh, Titan had full control of that one. SK definitely put up a great fight. But again, it was just, you know, especially with players like Ataraxia, it was sure. just too much for them to handle. Well, looking at it, right, I mean, the jungle camps seem like they're very, very even kilter. But you look at the main objectives, Allied and Zim, 0% for Fire Giant, 0% for Gold Free. We saw this in game one. Uh, to you first, Allied, you know, you get the jungle camps, but you really need to make sure those objectives are there. How do you actually, I mean, when you start getting 2, 3, 4K gold behind, how do you start getting your first objectives like Gold Fury? What it really comes down to is either pick potential or just outright trying to start a team fight. The best ways to do that is usually it's an awkward waddle between both teams in Gold Fury or FG, and you just kind of wait until someone goes in. Honestly, that's really what happens in a competitive fight. Yeah. <laughs> so because we, unless you can find a pick, there's no other way to really, you know, like you have to pose the threat of doing these set objectives. So the reason why Titan just you know, they got each objective is they have outright better team comps. SK picked poorly. It was just, it, you didn't feel like a complete team with SK. Titan had like some stonewall front lines and they had some great hyper carries in the back that performed extremely well. Ataraxia stepped up to the plate and pretty prime. It just shows that like, you know, Banaway is Vulcan. He's got plenty up his sleeve to help yeah. carry the team. That's going to be, uh, you know, again, it's just the, the versatility of that player is uh, definitely something to take note of. So Zim going uh, for a Titan in the, in the finals here, obviously they're going to be facing off against either COG Prime or COG Red. Goodness knows who that's going to be because that matchup is just going to be absolutely insane. Um, but, you know, they there were there were a lot of questions, right? And, and also I want to talk about the previous match as well. You know, there are a lot of questions about Titan's, you know, prowess, whether or not they can hang, which it is true, they can. Um, but you know, looking forward and also looking at what happened here, do you feel like the Kali pick from SK was kind of their undoing? Like, to go for it a second time after it really didn't work out the first? This is what I think. I mean, Titan is like, you know, the Kali experts, right? So when SK plays Kali, they know exactly how Kali would perform. Yeah. I think they were just... They, they should have played <laughs> something, you know, a little bit more feline, right? Something more like a Bastet, maybe something with that but you know honestly at this point in time let's go ahead and think about the sky above them right the, the heights they can reach <laughs> within this tournament and what you're looking at right the sky is the best thing to look at with the community sky night video coming at you oh again 